Hey, it's Megan of Say Hello Mama. I am doing a Q&A slash get to know me type series. This is part one. It is all about my son Barrett who is almost five and we have worked to manage and fight his speech delay, how we have gotten him to the point where he is kindergarten ready and everything that took and who we went to for help. This is a longer video than I usually do um, and if it's not something you're interested in, carry on your way. Follow if your children speak a mile a minute like my second one does. This might not be for you, but maybe if you watch, it could help somebody you know. Okay, deal. Let's go. Dog. 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 That's one of his favorite dog. words. So good dog. So cute. Dog. What is it? Dog. Dog. Oh. Oh. So at two years old, we moved internationally to Japan, but from two to two and a half, I didn't have the kind of access, I didn't know how to access it internationally to get help. Um, with his speech. So when we got back to the United States and he was November, he turned three in April, so he was two and a half. Basically, he just pulled us around by the hand and would like point to the fridge or he would um, cry or scream or throw these tantrums because he couldn't communicate with this. A lot of times as he got closer to three, we started being more and more concerned. <laughs> Yeah, where's the octopus? Because we would ask him something like, Barrett, do you want milk or water? And he would say, okay. It's not super helpful. <laughs> he knew you were asking him a question, but he would either just say, okay, like, like, yes, I've answered your question. Or he would say something like, okay, water? Because that was the last thing you had listed. Barrett, do you want milk or water? Okay, water. But what he wanted was milk. He just didn't even know how to pick between the two options. Um, and as an almost three-year-old, that's, that's wildly, wildly behind um, where he needed to be. We were recommended from our pediatrician, we were recommended to a developmental pediatrician. There's kind of two options. So I didn't know that through the public school system, through your city, you have access to people like a developmental pediatrician that will come to your house who will like look at your child and see how their speech is developing, see how their behavior is, if they maybe have um, sensory, if they might be needing to move on to the next step to be tested for autism spectrum disorder. I didn't know any of that. So we saw the developmental pediatrician and she is the one that recommended that we immediately start in two areas for him. So at just over three years old, it was May, he turned three in April, we started seeing a um, occupational therapist that they thought would be best for him. Her name was Jill. And so Jill helped Barrett with all kinds of sensory behavior problems that we were seeing. He was very sensitive to sounds and the blender going off. He would do this thing where he would want to stay in the bath and put the water up over his ears by laying back in the bath for sometimes up to 30, 45 minutes an hour because he was overwhelmed in his surroundings even though the surroundings were just me and then me and his baby sister. He was so active. We would go to the park and I could have stayed at the park all day and he would not have become what they referred to as regulated. His behavior would just be erratic. He couldn't listen, he wouldn't follow directions. He basically felt like he couldn't hear me. We didn't know what to do with him. So occupational therapy, we started immediately and he went every week for six months and then every other week for another six months, so for a year. We also at the same time started speech therapy. I think he was testing at about a 25 month old, so just over a two year old, and he's just over three at the time, on his speech development. Not good, not great at all. I think it was lower than um, fifth percentile. It was rough. It was a weird thing to hear that and not 
not have known how far behind he was. I knew he was behind, I knew we needed help, but to know he was that behind did not feel great as a mom. He ends up going, gosh, May to December-ish, and he's still struggling in every category, social, emotional, speech, all of it. And this is the point where a mom at the school that he's going to says, hey, I know he's in speech because we've talked. I used to be a speech pathologist through the public school system. Why don't you get him in that program? I'm like, what program? She's like, you don't know? There's a preschool that you're assigned to here in Santa Clara, California, where we were, that if he tests, he will be able to get into. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I go through the school's website, uh, through the district, and I find the link. I click that link, got his paperwork submitted. They emailed me back and said, here's your day and time where you come to the school and we will do a round of speech testing and behavioral testing to determine what his level is and what kind of services we can offer. Because at this point, his speech just was not improving very much. His behavior was still just all over the place. And I, 90% of me, thought that it was likely he was going to be on the, on the autism spectrum. And so taking him to that appointment, I was super tough. I didn't want to go. I wanted answers, but I didn't want to hear if they thought, I don't know, if they thought it was, if I was the, if I was a bad mom, if they thought that he was struggling because, I don't know, because I let him watch TV, or if they thought he was struggling because he didn't go to preschool early enough. I don't know, but I was very worried. I sucked it up because it was good for him, and I went, and a month later in February-ish, we got his, uh, his IEP, his Individual Education Plan, which said that it, at this point, it didn't look like he was going to fall on the autism spectrum. However, it did look like his speech was low enough and behind enough that he would be able to start with the preschool, which was a huge relief. So he starts going to this preschool and it is the, it's through the public school system and I can't say enough good things about it. It was five days a week from 1230 to 245. We started seeing immediate improvement like immediate, like he came home and he was counting and he, he was more willing to try different foods. I mean, as a stay at home mom, I thought I would be able to provide across the board all of the things that he needed to get him ready for kindergarten. And in Barrett's case, it simply was not true. I needed all the people and all the help that I could possibly get because it couldn't be just me or he would not be ready for kindergarten. That is a fact. <laughs> if I had kept him home with me and not sought out help, I don't know where we would be with him, but it would not be a good place. When we moved from California to Austin, Texas, where we are now, and I had to pull him out of that preschool, I was super heartbroken about it because he loved it so much. But when we got here to Texas and he went through their, not their testing, he was in like a month long um, placement in the special ed department, which over the new year they pulled him out of and said he's eligible for just the two day a week speech program that's at this other school. I mean, the relief I felt knowing that he was now just going to go to two day a week speech program was overwhelming because they sat me down and they said, if he goes to this, he will go to kindergarten on time. He may not need any help past kindergarten. What you have done to get him the help he's needed has made all the difference. I could not make all the difference for him, but getting him that help, getting him going, getting over my own fear of being told that it was me as a mom, that it was my fault, that it was something I had or hadn't done, getting over all of that over myself and just going and getting a new opinion about his circumstances, about where he was at, has made all of the difference. And the gratitude I feel about the original people that talked to us, the developmental pediatrician I paid way too much for, the OT, the occupational therapist, Miss Jill, that helped us Gosh, with all of the behavior, the sensory, he's still almost five. He is still the busiest, hard to settle down 
kid a lot of the time, but it is probably 40% of the time he is hard to get a handle on, and 60% of the time he is playing with toys, he is learning his letters, he is able to count really high, he knows stuff about space, he knows all of these different things that I couldn't have done on my own for him. Now, maybe that helps you, maybe that doesn't if you're sitting here with your 18 month old, your two year old, wondering if he, she is just slow to bloom or just a bit behind, but you can probably catch up on your own. My only personal, very personal recommendation would be to get a new second opinion. Talk to your pediatrician and then go contact your school district because there are experts out there at doing exactly what I didn't know how to do, and thank gosh. Okay, that is my Barrett update. Woo, we made it through. Um, took longer than I thought. If you have specific questions, if you want to bounce some ideas off of me, DM me on Instagram. You can comment here and tell me you're going to find me on Instagram. That'll help because I can check my others inbox. So DM me on Instagram, at Megan Kingsford. So thank you so much for following along. I hope some part of this helps you and look for part two in my getting to know me and question and answer series. I'll come up with a better name soon. Um, I'll see you guys, bye.